Hello and welcome back to part 2. In this video we will set up the robot by creating the kinematic skeleton, creating the collision geometries and also adding the inertia information so that we are then ready to export the model in part 3. Now the first thing I'll do is delete all the other things in the scene. I'm not 100% sure if this is necessary but I just like to keep it clean so it's easier to use. The next thing that we have to do is define the Phobos type of our objects. To do that, select all of them by hitting A and then going to the left into the Phobos tab and select Set Phobos Type. As you can see here, there are quite a lot. What we're looking for now is the visual tag because these, this model that we have here is the visual representation of the robot and for example not the collision model. Now one thing you should note is that after using an operator such as setting the Phobos type, you should finish that operator by running another operation. And you can also do this just by hitting A. Um, if you don't do this, you run the risk that your next operation might overwrite the change you've just made. Now we will define the geometry of our objects. To do that, select all objects that have the same shape and then go to define geometry. And you might be familiar with the fact that in the URDF dot format you can define primitive shapes such as a box or a cylinder and also complex shapes such as meshes. So what you define here is in which way your shape will be represented in the URDF format. Of course using primitive shapes is preferred because they are less expensive computationally but take whatever fits your case. Note that when you have an object selected and you click Define Geometry, that the type that is displayed is not the actual type of the object that you have selected. Instead, go to the right and click the little box icon, and then scroll down and there you will find the object information, such as, for example, the focus type and also the geometry. Now we will create a hierarchy for the robot in Blender by parenting the objects to each other. Again, I'm not 100% sure if this is necessary, but I think it's just better. Um, you can do so by selecting all the objects that you want to parent to another object and selecting the parent as the last thing, and then you hit Ctrl P and select parent as object. And now you can see that I can just grab the body of the robot and everything else will move with it. Now we will create the first link for the body of the robot. So I will select it and then click create link. Make sure that in the bottom left you have selected object selected for location. And you can see this object appeared. This is a bone in Blender. It has a root, a body and a tail. And the root is located at the bigger part of the body. And you can see this bone is flipped on its head. It should be the other way around. So we'll rotate it and then I will parent the body to that bone. And you do this also by selecting the body and then the bone, pressing Ctrl P, and now you have to select bone relative. They state from the wiki that you have to choose this one and others won't work. I will now do the same for the wheels and the head of the robot. Note that you can do the parenting also by using the parent link and parent objects fields in the bottom left, but they noted that there might be some problems when the links are not oriented correctly, so I chose to do it by hand because it's easy enough. After I parented all the objects to the links, I also parented the links of the wheels to the link of the body. And now if you look at the top right, you can see that in the tree there are a lot of armatures and bones. Um, usually when doing a blender model with armatures and bones you have only a single armature and multiple bones but here you have one armature and a single bone per link. Now we can give our model a name. Um, I chose to just call it Rover. You can see now that the uppermost parent node changed how it looks. It now has this wrench and I believe this means that it's now the root node of the system. And if you now go into a different link and go into its Phobos information, you can see that the part of model entry also says now that it's part of the rover and that the root object, and in this case also the parent object, is the root. 
Um, this naming was actually done by me, it's not generated. And you can also set a link, a link name here. I'll do that real quick. And if you now look into the tree, you can see that renaming the links actually changed the name of the armatures. In the wiki, they say that the armatures are kind of like the links in UDF and the bones are like the joints. This might help you in thinking about it. Now we will define the joint constraints. Just click on a link and then go to define joints. Uh, you can see there is a big list of possible joint types. For the wheels I will take continuous for, uh, for example. And then you can see there are some options like the max effort and the max velocity. And you can do this also for multiple joints at once. And for the head, I will take the revolute joint and here you can also set upper and minimum limits for the joint. And you can actually test out these constraints by entering post mode, either in the bottom left or by pressing control tab. And then when you select the link and you hit R for rotate, you can see that I'm not able to rotate further than specified in the joint limits. And of course you can also select the link of a wheel and then rotate the wheel. So that's a nice feature to check if your constraints are well defined. Next up is the auto generation of the collision models. Um, I will start with the wheels, just select all of them and then click on create collision objects and you can see it will create these boxes. You can select the proper shape by clicking here on the collision type and then selecting cylinder for the wheels and I will continue like that for the rest of the rover. Now when I was creating the eyes for the head, um, you can see that the box shape was looking pretty fine but when I changed it to cylinder it looked kind of weird and the axis seemed to be wrong so I just grabbed the object and rotated it and scaled it in such a way that it was fitting the eye of the rover well. Now that you have your collision objects you can't really see a rover anymore but there's a solution for that if you go up then you can select by Phobos type and here you can select by the uh, type you've given the object and we want the collision objects and then you can just hide them by pressing H. Um, if you want to see them again you can reverse it by selecting them in the same way and then pressing Alt H. Just be aware that when exporting they should be visible otherwise they will be ignored. Now I will create the inertia objects, for that I can hide the collision objects again because you want to have only the visual objects as a reference because that's how the objects actually look like. Then I will um, click here to create the inertia objects and then it will ask me for the mass. Right now I will give an equal mass for all objects, of course that's not true in reality but this is just for demonstration purposes. and. Yeah, then it will create the inertia objects for, for you. Um, you can find them at the center of the object, these little boxes. And if you check their properties, you can find the inertia values and you can also adjust them if you want. And of course, these six values represent the 3 times 3 inertia matrix. But because it's symmetrical, we can reduce it to six values. There is also the possibility to add motors to your links. Honestly, I didn't look too much into this, I just wanted to show that it's possible. Just select the links and then click Add Motor and then you have some options that you can choose from. And yeah, you will get these little objects that will represent the motors. Actually, you can also add sensors like cameras and other sensors. Um, you will have to play around with that for yourself. Um, but I just wanted to show that it's possible. Okay, now we have set up our model for the export. Um, we will wrap things up here for part 2 and I will see you in part 3.